Here, buddy, I'm back, and I'm ready to do Mario Party 2, so here we go finally with this. I've been trying to get ready, and I'm ready to do it. So anyways, as you know, Mario Party 2 is somewhat of a difference from Mario Party 1, where on the boards, you end up wearing these kind of costumes and everything for them, like Pirate Land, your Pirates, and Western Land, your Cowboys, Mystery Land, your Explorers, Space Land, your Space People, Space Cadets, or land your wizards and then the Bowser land you're actually in your normal uniform. So yeah, technically that's pretty much some things there. All the characters from the first game that were playable return in this game, so that's another thing. And the items things are the same way, so now here we go with the mini games. First, of course, the four player games. Now in Mario Party 1, throughout those videos, I was mentioning how some of these games appeared in Mario Party 2. Now we'll finally get into detail of what they look like in Mario Party 2. So first we have Abandoned Ship. This is a game that did not appear in Mario Party 1, but is similar to another game, Skateboard Scamper, which also appears in this game. This is the vertical version of Skateboard Scamper, technically, so in this game the characters are aboard a ship that suddenly hits a rock, a giant rock. They must climb up a large wooden pole in order to escape the sinking ship. While climbing up the pole, they must try and avoid the wooden pegs. The player must press the A button rapidly to make their character climb up the pole. They must also use the control stick to control the direction their character moves while climbing the pole. If a character gets stuck under one of the pegs, then they will lose time. Along the way, they will be able to collect extra coins that will be added to their total at the end of the minigame. If a character gets caught in the water, then they will be eliminated from the minigame and be dragged off by a blooper. blooper. Character that reaches the top of the pole will win the game. However, it is possible for all the characters to drown the water before reaching the top, resulting in a draw. Now, I don't see that happen often. I don't see a draw happen in this game often. Usually somebody usually somebody wins. I don't see any draws happening in this game often. So yeah, and another thing to notice, how many people noticed uh, the control sticks ga spinning games in Mario Party 1, they actually removed that and everything. Like we all know, like this is how it is. So none of that appears in the later game. So so some to some I needed to get out. So anyways, for abandoned ship, I'd say it's a right game. Um, it's in the middle on some occasions. It's not the best one, but it's an alright one. And there's also some little trick. You can't really outbeat the camera because if you get to the top, you can't really do anything. You're just stuck up there, and then the other players can catch up. Unless you're right near the very top of the ship. So. Just some normal game. It's just a middle one for me. So mixed on that one. Following that we have Bombs Away. Which actually also appeared in Mario Party 1. Now unlike Mario Party 1's version. In Mario Party 2, Sorry for the little pause there. Can you see see the difference? Okay, the difference is the ship looks different. It's got it's a big black flag ship in the first Mario Party, and then in Mario Party 2, it's a, a shell and a face thing. So technically it's the same concept as the original game, so I'm still kinda in the middle. The same thing can happen. You can get blocked, you can get the other players can get pretty aggressive, they can attack, so it's technically just the same format. Bumper balls also makes a reappearance in this game. One of my favorite mini games in Mario Party 1. However, the, unlike Mario Party 1, where you're on one island, in Mario Party 2, you play on three islands. And it's the same objectives, and there are three different fields. In the first one, the first one takes place on top of a tower located over a pit of lava. 
The stage is more of a neutral difficulty with the less seeming to try to portray the level as a challenge. In the second stage, the characters are relocated on the top of a mountain with a gi giant frozen shy guy at the center of it. However, the shy guy does not do does not do anything or do it. Due to the slippery ice, players are more likely to skid when trying to turn and must be careful to not fall off. And then on the third one, the characters are actually on the original Mar island from the original Mario Party. However, there's bumpy rocks on the island to expand the momentum, making them more likely to fall in the water. And then if they do fall, blooper carries them away. It's the same format, so same positive view. Theme. And I, to be honest, both versions are so good, I can't pick one over the other. Which version of Bumper Balls is better? The version in Mario Party 1 or the version in Mario Party 2? They're both really good. Next there's Deep Sea Salvage. This one is a Mario Party 2 original game. This one did not appear in Mario Party 1. In this game, players pilot their submarines. They grab coins, coin bags, and mines as a hammer bro throws them down from a boat above the water. If a player is hit by a mine, he or she is stunned for a few seconds. To float upward, the player must press the A button. This will increase the chance of grabbing coins and coin bags or being stunned by mines. And then at the end of the of the game, all players keep the number of coins that they got in that they got so it's almost kind of like treasure divers and everything from Mario Party 1 so but in this one they're a form of a submarine so it's a pretty alright game not too not much to say about it um following that mini game dizzy dancing Another Mario Party 2 original game that did not appear in Mario Party 1. So, in this game, the characters are spun around on a record, causing them to become dizzy. To complete the mini the mini game, a character must touch a floating treble clef. However, as the characters are dizzy, directions when walking are different than what they appear to be. For example, while holding the left on the joystick, the character may walk in the opposite direction. At first, I kind of got confused with how this game is played, but eventually it kind of got a little bit more in hand, so... I'd say it's pretty alright. I actually like this game, though. It's, it's it's just pretty silly how they walk and everything. And it's also got some good little power trying to get that little trouble clip, so... Uh, it's, a, it's an alright game. Next, Hexagon Heat. Now, this was not titled as this in Mario Party 1. There was a game similar, though. And if you're familiar with this type of game, then this similar type of game, then you may be familiar with the name Mushroom Mix-Up in Mario Party 1, where you're on colored mushrooms and you avoid falling into the water. In this game, however, in Hexagon Heat, it's the same format where Toad raises a flag and you have to go to it, except this time of being water and everything, the platform turns into a red hot burning steel and everything, and if you touch it, you're out, you're burned. So, it's a pretty good game. I like this mini game a lot. It's, I'd say it's one of my favorites in Mario Party 2. It's just like, just some good feel, just like how I liked Mushroom Mix-Up in Mario Party 1. So, really good game. And it's a lava pit they fall into, so that's another thing. I have to keep checking so I don't go too far over 15 minutes. Um, next mini game we have is Honeycomb Havoc. Pretty much an underrated game, mini game in Mario Party 2. Not a lot of people talk about this game or rate them on the lists. In this game, the characters are standing in front of a giant tree that contains honeycombs, fruits, and coins. In the background, there are various mountains and an open sky. Each of the characters are carrying a basket in front of them in order to catch the contents from the tree. At the start of the minigame, a character will hit a dice block that has the numbers 1 and 2 on it. 
The number that they receive from the dice block will be the number of fruits the character will collect. The objective of the minigame is for the characters to avoid getting the honeycombs up here in the tree. The tree contains a total of three honeycombs. If a character is forced to gather a honeycomb, then they will be chased by a swarm of bees and will be eliminated from the game. The last remaining character will win the game, and any additional coins that are collected will be added to the character's total. It's a pretty alright game. Um, it's pretty simple enough. Just hit the block and everything. It's, it's just a test of trying to find out not to get the honeycombs. Some say it would be luck based though because of that, so I don't know what my degree of saying it's luck based is. Probably either middle or lower. I don't I don't really think it's too much luck based, so it's just timing is what the thing is. Timing the block. So pretty alright game. Hot Rope Jump, another mini game that returned from Mario Party 1. Except in Mario Party, in Mario Party 1, is that the character that gets burned will lose the game and forfeit 5 points each character. And the game is over. Then in Mario Party 2, however, the Potaboos, they actually start off red in Mario Party 1, but then they actually start off blue instead of the orange, actually. But then as the rotations characters complete, the Potaboos will eventually turn orange, and then the orange ones are larger than the blue ones. And as it looks here, there is a similar mini game called All Fired Up in Mario Party 3, but we'll get to that when we get to that one, that game. So, technically, technically many prefer the Mario Party 2 version because it's it's actually unlimited, so you can go for many jumps. Heck, some people have gotten a lot of jumps before in that game, making it an intense battle, so... Technically, it's pretty easy for me to pick. I'd, pre I'd prefer the Mario Party 2 version just because it can be more of an epic battle. I mean, the Mario Party 1's alright, but I like the, the Mario Party 2 version more, so... It's pretty good. Lava Tile Isle. Some people, for some reason, do not like this minigame. I've seen a few people rate this on their worst list and everything. And that's actually, the concept actually got better in the later games, just not here though. So, to me, it's an alright game. Anyways, in this game, characters are situated on many grindles that are floating in a lava pit. The objective of this game is for the player to knock their opponents off the Grendels, or Grindels, whichever way it is, and into the lava pit below. There are a wide variety of attacks that can be utilized, including punching, kicking, ground pounding, and jumping on top of other characters. Although jumping isn't the best option, it's kind of risky. You could end up falling off. While the characters are partaking in the fight, the Grendel blocks switch positions, causing the playing field to shift while the characters are battling. Characters must take the precautions of jumping around the Grindel blocks. The last character standing will win the mini game. I actually like this game though. It's a pretty good battle game, battling um fight it out game. So, Lava Tile Owl to me is a pretty good game. I don't some think that sums up with it, but to me, there's no problem. And. And we'll end part one here. We'll continue part two of the four player game, games in a moment.